Welcome to Turkestan TV News. Always on and watching. A former Turkestan prisoner describes life inside China's detention camps. TechCrunch News. The rare first-hand account will help investigate human rights abuses. For 10 months in 2018, Owalbek Tordahun was a prisoner in one of the China's notorious detention camps, where he was tortured, subject to horrific conditions, and under constant surveillance. In a makeshift courtroom inside the detention camp he was being held, Tordahun was not permitted to speak and was made to sign papers he was given no time to read. As a former law student, he knew that the court was not following the proper legal process, but was nevertheless told that the court decision would lead to great things for him and that he would study and live for free. Tordahun is a Chinese passport holder and an ethnic Kyrgyz, one of the several ethnic groups, including Kazakhs, Tajiks, and Uyghurs, that have been charged with dubious, if not invented, charges and detained in West detention camps in East Turkestan, an occupied land by China 70 years ago, where most of the ethnic groups live. Beijing calls them vocational and education centers and says they are for combating Islamic extremism. But Tordahun is a Christian, who researchers say they have also been targeted and arbitrarily detained by the state. United Nations watchdogs say China has incarcerated at least one million Uyghurs and other Turkic people in detention camps in recent years, but the figure is believed to be higher. The Biden administration declared China's treatment of Uyghurs and other Turkic people a genocide, though Beijing has long denied allegations of human rights abuses. Tardahin is only able to tell his story after United States immigration authorities granted him and his family advance parole, a temporary immigration status allowing them to enter the United States, after congressional lawmakers lobbied on their behalf. Tardahin and his wife, Yildiz Uralova, and their son arrived in Washington, D.C. on April 8. As a former prisoner, Tordahan is one of the only few people with a first-hand account of the inside of China's detention camps, including rare knowledge of how the Chinese government uses technology, surveillance, and facial recognition to oppress millions of residents in East Turkestan, so-called Xinjiang, which United States lawmakers will use to investigate human rights abuses in China and the Chinese companies that supply surveillance technology to the camps. A letter seen by TechCrunch that was sent by Representative Chris Chimis of New Jersey in support of Tordahan's advanced parole case said his knowledge will provide vital evidence regarding the use of technology provided by Chinese companies such as Hikvision to facilitate gross violations of internationally recognized human rights by the Chinese government. Chimis, whose office didn't return a request for a comment, is a vocal critic in Congress of China's human rights record, including its use of surveillance technology for carrying out human rights violations. Senator Marco Rubio, vice chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, also reportedly supported Tordahan's immigration effort. Hikvision is one of the world's large suppliers of video surveillance cameras, making about $10 billion in profit in 2020. A year earlier, it was one of the several Chinese technology companies added to the United States government's economic sanctions entity list, effectively barring the company from buying United States components without the government's approval, citing its role in enabling human rights abuses in East Turkestan, so-called Xinjiang. Chiefly, successive United States administrations have alleged that Beijing relies heavily on the companies like Hikvision, but also Dahua, Huawei, SenseTime, and others to supply the surveillance technology it used to monitor the East Turkestan population, both across the region and also in its many detention camps. Ahead of arriving in the United States, Tordahun described the conditions of his detention, brutal interrogations, and forced medical procedures in a series of video interviews recorded by Coroner Halley, a government director at video surveillance news site IPVM. In December, Halley met Tordahun and his family in Kyrgyzstan, where they had been for the past year, to help them obtain their immigration paperwork onward to the United States. Amit fears that the Kyrgyz authorities could deport the family back to China, Halley told TechCrunch. 
In one of the video interviews shared with TechCrunch, Halley showed Tordakhna a photo of Hikvision's logo, which the former prisoner immediately recognized, saying that it was the same logo on the cameras in the cells in the detention camp and littered throughout the city. Speaking with TechCrunch on Tuesday, Tordakhan described the cells where he would be held with two dozen other prisoners for months at a time, and how the cameras, all branded with Hikvision logos, were always on and watching, he said. If the cameras saw anyone speak, a booming voice would tell them not to talk. He described how detainees would spend hours in silence, enforced by the cameras, and they would have little other human contact outside the cells for extended periods. Often the door would stay shut for long time spans, and food would be pushed through a slot in the door, even to move just a few feet to use the whole shaped toilet that he described. You would still need to raise your hand and ask for permission, because of the cameras watching, always, Tordakhan said. Tordakhan was released in November 2018 on terms similar to house arrest, where he would be monitored around the clock for the GPS tracker on his wrist that could only be unlocked with a special key. Although he was allowed to leave his house and travel around his small city, he described constant harassment from the authorities. Every time, he stressed when asked again. The cameras would see me and send off alarms, he said, describing the use of facial recognition across his neighborhood. The cameras are about six feet in height, also hick vision, and they're on every sidewalk, he said. There are so many of them, they don't need to change the directions of the cameras. It doesn't matter how long the road is, even the shortest road will have cameras. The whole entire city has cameras watching. TechCrunch could not independently verify Tordakhan's account, which is consistent with other, albeit rare accounts from survivors of East Turkestan detention camps. During the interview, Tordakhan showed a sketch that he drew mapping on the layout of the detention camp, which corresponds with satellite imagery of the camp where he was held. In an email statement sent via public relations firm specializing in crisis management, Hikvision said it takes all reports regarding human rights very seriously, but declined to provide a company spokesperson's name. Liu Pengyu, a spokesperson for the Chinese embassy in Washington, D.C., denied the allegations in an email statement. Human rights lawyers say the former prisoner's testimony will provide important evidence for the case filed with the International Criminal Court in The Hague. United Kingdom attorney Rondi Dixon, who's leading the team of lawyers compiling evidence of human rights abuses by China, said in a letter supporting Tordakhan's advanced parole that it was vital for him to testify in future proceedings. Tordakhan told TechCrunch that he wants more people to know about the conditions in Turkestan, so-called Xinjiang. Coming to America and being at peace and safe has been a goal for our family for a long time, he said. Deborah from Mr. Stunt TV News reported.